to Ron Siegel Radio on ESPN Radio 1700. Now, live in studio, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest and repeat offender. Bob Donnell's in the house. Everything next level. Good morning, Bob. Ah, good morning, Ron. Thanks for having me on. Glad to have you with us, as always. It's always a good time when Bob comes in. He and I have some great conversations off air, so we're going to share some with you on air today. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team, when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And of course, having survived. I will say this, I have survived, I've beaten anorexia. I've told that to many, many people, but today, I am very, very lucky because having beaten anorexia, well, one of the things that we know for sure today is National Chocolate Covered Raisin Day. Yeah, get me a little bit of those chocolate covered raisins. Have a enjoyable time with that. I, I if, if it says chocolate in it, you know, how can you go wrong having chocolate? You can enhance it a little bit for those of you who so desire to indulge, which I do. Add a little bit of, have that chocolate later in the afternoon, five o'clock somewhere, anywhere, dinner time, throw a little bit of red wine with it. Mm, nice. Moving on to the news of the day. You gotta love some of the news stories that are out there. And because we can, we just throw up some of what's going on in, in the world. You may not have caught some of these things. One of them, a story out of Emory University. Now, some of these things, I just can't make up what's going on in some of these places. Emory University. The students there, and I, I wish I had some music, I guess it's like a lullaby or a little baby stuff. I don't, I don't know what it is. Somebody wrote Trump. 2016 on in chalk all over different places of the university. Now it's chalk. It's not spray paint. It's not, you know, anything permanent. It's chalk. And the students woke up and they have got severe distress syndrome. They're needing to get counseling because they are having a major problem. It says they are in pain is the terminology. And Jim Wagner, pinhead Jim Wagner, he's the president of the university in Atlanta, meeting with the protesters and agreeing with the students. Now, Bernie Sanders, he's okay to be there. Black Lives Matter, that's okay to be there. But chalk causes distress for students at Emory University. Can you believe that? I mean... This is ridiculous. I think if I got a resume from somebody at Emory University, I might look at it and say, you know something? I wonder what kind of education they might have got. Because they go, they've got a pinhead president that thinks writing in chalk. Now, I don't know about you, when I was little, we used to draw on the sidewalk in front of the house, some of, 
Hate to be a little bit uh, chivalrous, I think is the term I like to use. The girls used to play hopscotch out front. I don't remember too many of the guys playing hopscotch. When I go down and walk along the beach, I see all kinds of drawings on sidewalks in chalk. And I've never got this sense of, of being of anxiety. It doesn't, you know, I, I don't have to go see a, a psychologist, psychiatrist, because there's chalk on the sidewalk. But at Emory University, their students, uh, they have a little problem with chalk. Or maybe it's with saying Trump 2016. Can't imagine which one of those caused the problem. But you come a little bit closer to home. We saw that that is some loon over there. And, and, and being given some level of credibility by the pinhead president of the school. Unbelievable. But come a little bit closer to home. And uh, those of our friends in the Arizona market. Holy cow. Think about this. Is a, this, is a, this goes to a new level. Do you remember, I guess I'm, it, it, time flies when you're having fun. Do you remember Gabrielle Giffords, re representative from Arizona? 2011, she was shot by Jared Lee Loeffner. Now, again, I'm not politically correct. I always worry when I see people with three names. Jared Lee Loeffner. Lee Harvey Oswald. John Wilkes Booth. Little bit of a, I don't know, maybe there's no correlation, but you know, you just start thinking about these things. Well, Mr. Loeffner's got a problem. Remember, he's the one that shot Gabrielle Giffords in 2011. Now he is suing her for $25 million in federal court because he has emotional and psychological distress. What are you doing? I certainly hope that some judge throws this out. Now, the man is serving, the man, the animal, I should say, is serving seven consecutive life sentences plus 140 years in the shootings because in addition to Miss Giffords, he killed six people and wounded 12 others. He pleaded guilty to the charges, and now he's the one doing the suing. Where are we heading? And people wonder... Why it is that we are so enthralled in so many areas of the country with Donald Trump and just saying it like it is and a common sense person. Whether you agree with the man or not, and I've told you before I'm not a big Trump fan, but some things, common sense, I think has lost its way in the United States of America in some instances. Or maybe it's lost its way in Buenos Aires. Yeah, I don't think we have any salsa music because that's what the president found was on the top of his list yesterday. Did you check that one? Doing the tango and taking in other pleasures in Argentina. Now, nah, there's nothing going on in Europe right now that might require his attention. Uh, Cuba, he was going to a baseball game uh, holding hands with the, one of the Castro brothers uh, doing an ESPN interview from the ball game. Left there, so, you know, it's spring break. Went down to Argentina and doing the tango. Uh, gotta wonder. <laughs> you just gotta, and, and people question the commentary from Trump. I wonder if he would be doing the tango if, you know, if, if uh, under these same circumstances. I wonder, well, I shouldn't go there. But this is what you get when we, and you know, I guess the president did make the commentary, and I can quote him because it's his words, elections have consequences. Well, prior to President Obama, yeah, when there was a crisis in the country, the president was front and center. Not at a ball game. Not doing the tango with somebody, well, and you know something, I don't even know who it was he was doing the tango with, but I know it wasn't with his wife. Now, nah, to me, I don't do the tango with anybody. My wife gets mad at me because I'm not into any of that dance stuff. But uh, I just, you gotta laugh. You gotta laugh. I mean, this is, uh, where, where is, I think I have. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hanks. Uh, that was a, <laughs> un unbelievable. It's just, it, it just does amaze me how these things can happen. I, I just don't get it. 
But that's uh, that's the world that we're living in today. There is some economic news that we can chat about as well. Well, we'll talk about the economic news a little bit later. I want to, well, maybe we don't even talk about it. Oh, here, here it is. I'll give you the economic news. I don't want you to feel left out. You came here this morning. Jobless claims rose by 6,000 last week. The media is going to spin that, that that was good. Commerce Department reports durable good orders down 2.8% in February. Don't know how they're going to spin that one to be good, but that is what's happening. And you are listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets when we come back. We're going to chat with Bob Donnell. We've got all kinds of good stuff to chat about there. Further proof, there is not a housing bubble. Don't listen to anybody that tells you otherwise. Credit cards for bad credit. Yes, they are out there. And did you know some of the other benefits you have from your Costco membership? We'll talk about that in the Word on Wealth segment today. You can reach me anytime. Call the off-air number 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned, we'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Ron Siegel Radio Date Night Trivia presented by Reunion Kitchen and Drink. Friday, Ron will pose a question based on on air conversations during the prior seven programs. The person to post the answer according to the guest conversation will win a date night package, including a dinner gift card for Reunion Kitchen and Drink. You might even be able to say hi to Ron when you visit Reunion Kitchen and Drink. It's not every day your home gets flooded, but when it happens, you've got the good people at Apris on your side. With over 25 years of construction and insurance experience, they can turn any disaster around, making your home good as new. For 24-7 support, call 844-GO-APRIS or find us on the web at www.apris.me. Day, night, rain, or shine. When it happens to you, you know what to do. Go Apris. Remember, call 844-GO-APRIS. That's 844-462-774. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 0186. Six nine four five two. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. At 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Word on Wealth segment today, it's being brought to you by VIP Mortgage. When you're ready for any kind of a home loan, our friends at VIP Mortgage, they've got it for you. Just about every product on the market, they're all back. Give me a call. I'll put you in touch with the right folks over there to see if they can help you out. I was looking at some articles recently, and and to a fault, maybe, ask my wife, probably to a fault, definitely. I like going to shop at Costco. I'm a bargain hunter. Probably buy too much quantity for what we need. Uh, I've never been, I I like to save money. But then I saw this article, and I thought, boy, what a great way to share some information. We think about, you know, get it, if if you want 600 rolls of toilet paper, there are some people that I know that are a little bit full of it and need it. You can go to Costco, you get a great deal on it. Cheetos, you get a, a, a package much bigger than you need. But think about this. Do you ever think about Costco for travel? I just saw this article, a package, and, and 
Because I'm all, well, I'm not going to go there. Package from New York to Jamaica. Six nights, all-inclusive stay. And I know that you may not want to go from New York to Jamaica. So don't just use the idea here. If you were to book this through Orbitz or one of the other online services, $4,125. This is a Barostar Grand Hotel Delta Airfare Ground Transportation. $4,125 on Orbitz or $3,738 Costco Travel. Save $387. Where are you going? I know for some people it's already spring break. I don't know about you. I never think about Costco if I want to rent a car, if I want a hotel room. It's just not on my radar. It's going to be now. Visa, they've got some specials there where they offer some benefits. I, I'm not going to even mention this one. It's the retirement group. I don't like them. They're an, an insurance company. They're for f people 50 and over. They give you some good deals, but I don't like their political uh, persuasions. I wouldn't want to support that. Sam's Club has one. The Auto Club. Now, most of us have used the Auto Club for it. I just never thought of Costco. And, and there's a lot of Brick and Mortars, Word on Wealth segment, again, brought to you by VIP Mortgage. Looking to save you some money. One of the uh, pleasures I have, I, I, you know, some, one of the things I, I share all the time, that I'm, I am a blessed person. I get to chat with people, and many times when you get to chat with folks on air, then you end up developing relationships, developing friendships, bonds, and... And then you get to share that information maybe at a next level. It's just a thought. <laughs> My friend, Bob Danella is in the house. Bob's come. I use the name because actually Bob's trademarked the name or coined the phrase everything next level. Hmm. How'd you get that, Bob? How'd you come up with everything next level or, next, or the next level programs? You know, one of the coolest things was uh, I kept looking around and the words are used all the time. You see right. it in the media, you see it in print, you see it in television, you hear it on television shows, talk shows, um, sitcoms, everybody. And for years, I had always said next level and going to the next level and getting to the next level and you should get, you know, work towards your next level, all that. And uh, and one day when I, I thought about it, I thought, you know, what better brand than just use something that's already out there? And so what I did was I said, if I named it that and somebody said, so what's the name of your company? And I said, next level. They would say, oh, I think I've heard of that. And I would say, you probably have. And, uh, and they, it would be correct. And so that's kind of why I, I branded it that way. And, you know, that's been probably using Next Level for over 12, 12 years or so. So as a company, what is the what is the focus, the mission of the company? What are you trying to do? Everything Next Level is really focused on personal and professional growth and development of teams, individuals, and companies. So what is the Next Level? to whatever it is for them. So for some it might be financial, for some it might be relational, for some it might be health. Whatever it is for them, we're focused and committed to increasing and helping them get to their next level. That makes it kind of fun because in your situation, you know, you could be dealing with, and I know that you have, dealt with somebody from the very, very dark parts of their own life, mm. trying to get them just to survive till, till lunch. Yeah. Right, or it could be getting some major executive trying to take his corporation to the Fortune 500. Right. right. How do you know from one day to the another, next? I mean, is it is it something that's common that you see that everybody's missing that can help them move forward? That's a great question. You know, yeah, I am very blessed that I get to to do a lot of different things. I mean, you're absolutely right. Um, as far as the different the 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 span of different types of people that I get to work with, really the 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 most important thing, I was asked when I was 15 years old, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and, and I was told, you know, she was going to only live around about six months. But I had a gentleman that came up to me one day and he says, so Bob, um, you know, what do you plan on being when you grow up? And I, I don't know about you, Ron, but I mean, at 15, I didn't really think too much about what I was going right. to be. But I thought, well, you know, baseball player, football yeah, player, you know, right? fireman, policeman, <laughs> yeah. whatever. I said, I don't really know. And he says, um, he goes, well, there's, there's a couple of things that I can give you some advice on. Um, he goes, you can either... You can either focus on a product or a service or an industry, or you can focus on the one thing that will determine your success at any of those things, any and all. And I go, what's that? And he goes, human behavior. And I went, 
Well, then I vote for human behavior. And so from that point on, I really became a student of human behavior, just trying to figure out why somebody does or doesn't do something or how does somebody re achieve great results with less of an education than somebody who has this doctorate. And, um, and so when I look at human behavior, all the patterns start to emerge. And once you start seeing a pattern, then you can identify certain things about certain people and why they will or won't do something that they say they're gonna do. I mean, we all know people that say, I'm gonna start a business next year. I'm gonna start going out on the dating market again. I'm gonna start losing weight, whatever it is. And if we just look at human behavior, if we just really come to an understanding of what human behavior is, we'll see the patterns. And so when we start looking at an executive or we start looking at a drug addict, it doesn't matter. It's all based on human behavior. And so what we do is examine that. So my core value is, or my core belief is to help companies, teams, and individuals align their behavior with their desired results. If you do that, you have a much better chance at getting that desired result, whatever it is, personally or professionally. So how do you do, how do you, how, maybe we'll do a little counseling session. Mm -hmm. So how do, how would I as an individual, and I know that this is going to affect millions of people listening, how would I as an individual, my core, I want the, the, the desired effect, okay, I'd like to lose 50 pounds. Mm. My core behavior is I like to eat, I like to drink, I like chocolate-covered raisins on Raisin Day. Right. How do I get those things into alignment? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's a couple of things. One of the one of the principles is whatever becomes acceptable becomes inevitable, and it's a next level pillar. And uh, you know what that say, means wait, is you got to say that again. Yeah. What that means is whatever becomes acceptable becomes inevitable. So once we make something acceptable, if I if I make it acceptable to live on less then what's the odds that I'm going to start living on less? When I make the, it acceptable to gain weight, what's the odds that I'm going to gain weight? And so people say, Bob, what's the, what's, you know, there, there isn't, I, I don't understand the law of acceptability. So the law of acceptability states whatever becomes acceptable becomes inevitable. When did it become acceptable to be overweight? When did it become acceptable to not make enough money? When did it become acceptable? Whatever it is. And so they, that really applies to everything. <clears throat> absolutely. <clears throat> Every year of your life, excuse me. And everything, the interesting thing is every time I say, when did it become acceptable to blank, the answer is always the same. Whether it's weight, loss, health, you know, sorrow, uh, whatever it is, the answer is always the same. And they always say, it's never been acceptable. And so I, I had a, a young lady one day and I said, so she goes, Bob, I'm having a problem gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. And I said, when did it become acceptable to be fat? And the reason I used fat wasn't to be cruel. The reason I used fat was because she had heard the word overweight so often that it really would have had no effect. And I really ne needed to jar her out of a place where she had become very comfortable with saying overweight. So we changed the dynamic of the word just so that it would have a different opening in her, in her brain to be able to res receive the information I was about to give her. But of course she said, it's never been acceptable, Bob. I said, no, there's a moment of acceptability. I said, was there ever a time when you walked into your, your, your closet and you put on a pair of jeans and they didn't fit very well? She goes, yeah. And I said, what did you do then? Did you wear them anyways or did you put them back on the shelf and reach for a looser pair of pants? She said, I reach for a looser pair of pants. I go, that was the moment of acceptability. Because then, whatever happens, it's going to be inevitable. Next day, when you walk in that closet, did you reach for that tight pair of jeans again? Or did you reach for another loose pair of pants? She goes, another loose pair of pants. I said, you began to accept the fact that that's what you needed to do. She goes, what was I supposed to do, Bob? Wear tight pants? I said, man, the tighter the better, honey. I said, the tighter <laughs> well, the better. That's only for some people. <laughs> well, I said, <laughs> I've gone to some stores where the tight ones didn't look so good. <laughs> I said, the tighter the better because it, the more uncomfortable it is, the more you'll be likely to do something about it. And I said, so if they were so uncomfortable that when you went to eat, it reminded you that, oh, this is, I can't eat anything else because it's so uncomfortable. You'd start walking. You'd start taking the stairs. You'd start parking a little bit further. You'd start eating less at lunch. You would start to do things to change that behavior because it was uncomfortable. And so then we started to change the process. So helping her understand that that acceptability is the first thing, that whatever is going on in her life, the only reason it exists is because we made it acceptable. Interesting. When we come back, I want to take that a little next step, or the next level maybe. What are the thoughts about affirmations? How does that fit in? We're going to chat about that with Bob Donnell when we come back. 
You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. We will also chat about proof there is not a housing bubble, contrary to what some of the media wants to tell you, and credit cards for bad credit. How do you get credit cards if you got bad credit? Well, we'll talk about it. You can reach me anytime. Call the off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second and home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Southern California attorneys have over 15,000 real estate agents to call in Orange County for their personal and professional needs. Why do they overwhelmingly call Melinda Johnson? Simple. It's the Melinda Johnson trifecta. Melinda is an attorney, real estate broker, and realtor. Does your family deserve the same professional services California lawyers demand? Call Melinda Johnson at 714-863-5485. That's 714-863-5485. Or on the web at freedomfirstproperties.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value. Refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037 and DRE number 01869452. 37% of American homeowners believe they have over 20% equity in their homes. Fannie Mae tells us 69% of American homeowners have over 20% equity in their homes. Fully one in three American homeowners are not informed about the amount of equity they have in their homes. Are you one of them? How might this be holding you back from achieving your goals? Text RSR CMA 279564 to get a property valuation from one of the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Again, to know how much your home is really worth, simply text RSR CMA 279564. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, Here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. Your Credit Matters segment today. Of course, we've got a Your Credit Matters segment today. Credit Sanitizer asked us to share some great information with you. Well, of course, then we got to get you to Credit Matters. That is bad credit, bad credit, cre- easy for me to say. I wish that, that guy would get let my tongue go. Holy cow. <laughs> we'll try this again. How about credit cards for those with bad credit? There are many, many different credit cards. One of the services that I like, and it does not, it's free, one of my favorite words, don't pay attention to the credit score they tell you because that's wrong. That's a FACO score, not a FICO score. But the data they have, that's what's the important part. 
credit karma.com credit k-a-r-m-a.com they look at what's the trajectory of your credit score that you can look at but it also looks at what's going on on your credit profile so it's going to tell you where the derogatories are if you have any derogatories it's going to tell you what new uh, accounts are being on there who's checking your credit but one of the other things that it'll do also is give you an indication of which credit card companies might accept you for a credit card now some of the features that you want to look at on the credit cards for those that have challenged credit what is the interest rate that they're charging one of the services I saw recently they'll charge you they charge you an annual fee but if you pay 1% more on the interest rate then they waive the annual fee well if you're wise and you're not paying interest you're paying your bill off right before the statement closing date not after not remember you do not want to pay between the closing date and the due date you want to pay it before the statement closing date that particular credit card you're not going to be paying any fees anyway you might have to go for a while with a secured credit card some of the bigger banks and credit unions offered the secured credit card and you can get those and start developing credit you need to have here's an issue a lot of people think well I don't need a credit card I've got a debit card number one that's a pain in the neck especially if you get hacked the other area it's a pain in the neck is you go to a hotel or a car they charge more than they have more than what your, your fees are so you've got a bunch of money on hold that you really they're taking they're holding up your money your liquidity that's just the thought of that one so don't do it the other part of it that I want you to be aware of you know with the secured credit card if you get here's the ideal you want one mortgage two car payments three credit cards that's the ideal credit profile but if you've got challenged credit or you've got challenges and you're not looking to buy a car or a house my recommendation is when you see on credit karma that you can qualify for a credit card take it then what ends up happening is if you have a challenge down the road because it's going to take some time to get rid of those inquiries worked through get some history on each of those cards then if you have a challenge down the road the excessive amount of credit cards actually serves as a life vest for your credit score you got 10 credit cards you're paying them all on time they all got minimal utilization but they're all active and you have one late payment it's not going to affect your credit as much because like I say you've got all those other positives with one negative as opposed to if you have one card with one negative well, you're in trouble if you've got a bit of a problem <laughs> Yeah, not a good one. That is the Your Credit Matters segment. Again, brought to you by our friends, CreditSanitizer.com. And if you caught this in the news, if you work for Sprouts, you might want to go to CreditSanitizer.com. Uh, you've been hacked. You know it. And uh, they've got the LifeLock service right there on CreditSanitizer.com. So before the break, we were talking about, with Bob, we were actually talking with Bob Donnell, everything next level. Bob was sharing with us the the pillar of the of his organization what what say that again bob what becomes whatever becomes acceptable becomes inevitable is the law of acceptability law of acceptability okay then you had made the comment as far especially about the idea that you're we're using the correlation of weight and when did it become you know when did it become acceptable to be fat hmm and morbidly obese and grotesque you didn't use those words I didn't use those, right? I mean, and I could say some of them because I've been every one of them I was mm. 425 pounds at one time some people say I'm still a little grotesque maybe it depends on what they're talking about but here's the thought what are your thoughts a lot of folks talk about these affirmations you know if you mm. see something in front of you all the time obviously if you're fat you see that in the mirror all the time mm. but we don't correlate that to when did it become acceptable mm. Should I put that on the mirror in my bathroom? Yeah, I mean, it might be a good thing to, to write down on, on the mirror. Uh, well, that when did this become acceptable? <laughs> yeah, when did this become acceptable? Or, um, you know, but it, whatever becomes acceptable becomes inevitable is for the, the good and the bad. So once it becomes acceptable to lose the weight, once it becomes acceptable to eat healthier, once it becomes acceptable, then that becomes inevitable as well. So it's not just to the adversary, it's also to the advocate. But yeah, I, well, I, that makes total sense. But then on the flip side of it is, I don't know too many people that 
until, until you get to a, a very, very significant number. You know, I'll put on the, the comfortable shorts in the morning because I like, you know, just most of the time, uh, if I'm not on radio, well, radio most probably you can't see if I'm wearing shorts anyway, <laughs> right? But, uh, or Ron Siegel Radio TV. I, I know, I know you can't ever see it on radio. But, you know, the, I put on the comfortable pants, you know, so maybe I lose 10 pounds. It, there's nothing, that, there's no negative connotation because I think sometimes the, the motive, the, the, the motivation, is something that bothers you mm. but it doesn't bother you to lose weight so how does it work as well from the positive side well because we're, we're talking about pain versus pleasure there but and when we're talking about the the law of acceptability how it works is there's a reason why we gain weight there's a reason why we smoke. But there's every a fat reason. Person knows that we gain weight because we eat too much. We don't exercise. <laughs> well, we know, every, that, we know every diet. That, yeah, unfortunately, that's the that's the symptom. Oh, okay. But the problem is really probably something deeper than that. Okay. So um, one of the things I get asked all the time on my process in working with people, and I say the problem is not the problem. Is the first thing I have to understand that whatever they're going to tell me is the problem. Got to tweet that one out. The problem is not the, the problem. The problem. It's the symptom. Okay. And so what we have to do is look at what's the real problem. So, for example, that young that young lady I was working with, she um, and and you know weight loss is not my specialty. It's just one of those things that I I, I know that the law of acceptability applies to right. that and is visible. But uh, one of the things what we realized was that there was a deep seated thing for her. Uh, as a matter of fact, she was wearing baggy clothes, and I said, so when did you start wearing baggy clothes? And she goes, I don't know. And I said, well, when was the first time you ever realized that a man looked at you, an older man looked at you and made you feel uncomfortable when you were young? And she says, 15. I said, well, that was quick. I mean, and she goes, 15, I was walking through the mall with my mom. She was very well endowed. <laughs> and she said, and I was starting to form my breasts. And all of a sudden, um, I noticed this man walking towards me, looking at me longer than he looked at my mom. And I said, how'd you feel? She goes, I felt uncomfortable. I said, when did you start wearing baggy clothes? She goes, oh, about 16. And I said, see, that was the first time, but it wasn't the last. And she goes, you're right. And I said, so at some point, you feeling uncomfortable, did you want men to keep looking at you and make you feel uncomfortable? She goes, no. I said, so what did you do? You started, it became acceptable for men not to look at you. I said, so we need to think about is it acceptable for men to look at you now? And she goes, well, I said, do you want love? Do you want a man to look at you and go, mm -mm. do you want a man like really to crave you, love you, desire you, adore you, appreciate you? She goes, yes. I said, we have to make it acceptable for those men to look at you again. So what we did was we just did a little thing. I said, you know, just put a little bit of makeup on. Just do your hair every morning um, rather than a ball cap. And just wear a little bit more form-fitting clothes. Not tight, just a little bit more form-fitting clothes. We want to make it acceptable. Within three months, it was amazing. She started losing weight. Within six months, she was in a great relationship. She was happier than ever. Now, it had nothing to do with anything other than she realized that the law of acceptability could apply for the advancement or for the retreat of anything in her life. So, so we can actually apply that then to schooling, education, career? Sure. How, so how do we do that? You know, there's a lot of people that listen. I mean, we've talked about in, this, in our country, nobody, there's no job wage growth in this country in seven mm. or eight years. Mm. How do we deal with some of these things from a, for, for our business? I mean, you know... How do, do we make it acceptable that, yeah, I can work 20 hours a day, 15 hours a day? Is that, is there limitations to this acceptability? There's going to be limitations, but it's going to be based on what you are wanting as an outcome and then making it acceptable for a healthy way. So there's, there's, you know, a lot of different ways that we go about things and we go about way, things to fulfill certain needs of ours. And we can either do that in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. And so if we're looking to achieve a certain result, we have to realize that the law of acceptability, we have to understand how that works, but then we also have to understand, are we using it for betterment or for to our detriment? And so that's going to, the way that we apply that, increasing our business, um, you know, making more sales. I work with a lot of sales organizations, sales driven companies. I say, you made it acceptable to make fewer sales. No, we haven't. Well, you have, because the fact that there's no, nothing in, in, in place to hold someone accountable to greater sales or nothing in, in place to hold them accountable to taking more action 
how much more action is going to be necessary for X amount of sales? They go, I, well, I don't know. It depends on the individual. I said, well, there's a guideline. How many, what's your numbers? What are your sales to, to um, appointment ratio and your appointment to lead generation? Once we understand those numbers, then we can start applying the law of acceptability to it's no longer acceptable to make less than 20 sales calls a day. If you're putting it in a healthy way, you can do that. The unhealthy way would be like, okay, well, we just got to work until we make X amount of sales. Big difference there. Big difference. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to also chat, we'll chat with Bob when we come back further. How do, you, how do you reach out to Bob and see if maybe you can get him to come and talk to your sales organization or your business, help you grow a little bit? We'll talk about all those things when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. You can reach us anytime at the off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsiegelradio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Do you have a loved one who wants to stay in their home, but you have health concerns about it? The Preferred Care Team understands the challenges of caring for your loved ones. Their goal is to keep seniors as independent as possible while maintaining their health, safety, and overall well-being. Whether you need just a few hours a week or 24-hour care, Preferred Care caregivers are trained to meet your needs. Call Preferred Care at 714-696-9150. That's 714-696-9150. Or visit PreferredCare.com. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call... Call 800-306-1990. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. If you've recently experienced a big life change like loss of health insurance, you may still qualify for health coverage through Covered California. To find a plan that's right for you, visit CoveredCA.com. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. 800 306 1990. 800 306 
1990, the real time real estate segment today being brought to you by your household board of directors. You gotta love the board of directors. Every major corporation has one. Why don't you? Even small corporations have boards of directors. Here's the simple solution. You have a board of directors. They give you guidance. It's your decision to take it because sometimes the board has various pieces of guidance. Different people have different perspectives. That's the idea. Now, how do you deal with that on your personal level? Where? Well, it's pretty simple. You text A. TP Area Trusted Professional to 79564. Take a brief survey and we will put you in touch with the folks that you need to meet. That would be maybe an estate planning attorney, maybe an elder law attorney, maybe you need a financial planner. Most of us could use want to save a little bit of money on taxes, so we introduce you to a tax professional, financial professional, real estate professional. You might need a mortgage or reverse mortgage professional, insurance. All these people kind of fit around your household board of directors. They're your finances. I would suggest to you, other than a very, very small portion of the population, your household finances are probably more important to you than those of Google or Apple computers. Yet we watch what they're doing. They're in the news all the time and you're not getting that same kind of guidance. Text ATP 79564. How do I know undoubtedly that we are not looking at another housing bubble? And I shared this with you recently. Economics 101, supply and demand. That really showed us that we're not in a housing bubble. I posted this morning a graph that also talks about monthly mortgage payments on median priced homes from 1990 to 2015. We put them into 2015 dollars so that you know you can't say that's a, a dealing with inflation. 1990 median priced home the mortgage payment was twelve hundred forty five dollars. A median priced home today, the mortgage payment, $858. This is coming out of a report from the Joint Center for Housing, Harvard University, and the National Association of Realtors. Now you might say the Association of Realtors has a bias in this. Harvard University? Pretty well-renowned institution. Not like Emory University. Mortgage payments currently well below the historic average that time for the, the time period. Very simple. Purchasers are not overextending themselves to buy a home like they did during the housing crash. Now, you might say, okay, Ron, 1990 was 1245. In in 2015, 858. What was it at the height of the real estate bubble? $1,305. About five, almost $500 more than it is today. So we're not anywhere near that housing bubble. We've got low interest rates. We've got high demand. People are not looking to sell their houses, so there's low supply. These are some of the issues that affect a bubble. We've, we've talked about the definition of a bubble before. It's prices going up because prices are going up. Well, right now, prices are not going up because prices are going up. Prices are going up because there's not enough supply. That's Economics 101. That is the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by the Area Trusted Professionals, your household board of directors, text ATP 79564. Been chatting this morning, Bob Donnell is in the house, everything next level. Bob puts on a whole series of seminar events, and I've gone to many of them, and I can tell you this for sure, that one of them is better than the next. It's amazing how many the, between the masterminds and, and connectology, inner game, and there's another one that I'm missing, remember? Art of Intervention. Art of Intervention. Mm -hmm. One is better than the next, and I, you've got one coming up. I do. Yeah, I actually have one coming up on April 1st, April Fool's Day. April 1st. And you is, would not be a fool to go to it. You'd be very, very wise to go to it. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is Mastering Your Inner Game, which is a psychology piece. It's really about everything in your life and helping you uh, develop a foundation for building your life upon, personally and professionally. That's a lot said into a little, you know, a, a, a very co or deep context. Yeah. So what do you mean by, you know, it's a foundation. I mean, where do we, 
How do I know what my inner? I don't even know what my inner game is, no less. What, what, give us explain a little bit there. Great point. Well, one, your inner game is everything that makes you up who you are today, personally and professionally. Your health, your uh, the way you view the past, the present, and the future. Your physiology, your psychology, your sociology. Everything that makes you up who you are today is what I classify as e- either your inner game or your your psychology. Um, it, it's all combined. It's not just mindset. Mindset's just the way you think, but your psychology. Your inner game is everything that makes you up who you are today, past, present, and future. But your what uh, one of the foundations is your psychology or your inner game must be strong enough to support the actions required for the result desired. So we all know things that we want to do that we keep saying we're going to do. We're going to start that business. We're going to put ourselves on the dating market. We're going to make more sales calls. We're going to start going to the gym. And we typically rely on willpower. But when willpower collides with patterns, patterns win. And so what we have to do is understand that we have to develop a psychology that will actually support those actions required or it won't ever happen. So people say, Bob, how do I know what my psychology or my inner game is at this point? Your inner game is supporting exactly what you're doing and nothing more right now. If it was supporting more, you'd be doing more. And it's kind of like the house. My house is a... My inner game wins. Your inner game wins either way. So (laughs) So if I say that I want to earn more money... And I sit on the couch all day. Yeah. They don't support each other. They're, they're, your, not, they're incongruent. Your inner game is supporting sitting on the couch. Your inner game isn't supporting going out and making more sales. So your inner game is just doing exactly what it's doing right now. So how do you do that? Well, you go to the gym and you start building up the muscle. I get people all saying, Bob, when I, when I, you know, when I start making more money, I'm going to come to one of your events. When I make more money, I'm going to buy your programs. And I say, that's kind of like saying I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym once I've already got a six pack. You know, we, and we not go six pack of beer. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> we go to the we go to the gym to get the six pack. And so, you know, when people come to like mastering your inner game, it's really about pouring that foundation. It's, you know, my house was built in 1937. It's that foundation was poured for that house. If I tore down the house and I built up a a four-story home on that that same foundation, no matter how good the workmanship was, it would crumble because the foundation was not poured for that. Most people are operating their life at a level right now and they just keep stacking more experiences on it, but the foundation, they haven't done anything about strengthening their foundation. That's where mastering your psychology, mastering your inner game is really focused about helping you build the foundation so that you can actually build the life, the house, the business, the relationships that you want on that foundation. So most of us kind of believe or have the mindset we've been taught that, you know, I, I went to school, I got my degree, that's my foundation. Can I change my foundation at 40, 45, 50 years old? Absolutely. Um, just like you could pour the, you could change the foundation of a house that's already built. You could tear down the house. You could reinforce the foundation. You could put more rebar. You could pour more concrete. You could do all those kind of things and build. Most people are just operating with the fallacy that they can't do anything about it, so this is just the way they were formed. And they're either using their past as a reason or an excuse. Two people grow up in an in a abusive neighborhood, an abusive home, everything else, and one becomes Oprah Winfrey and one becomes a drug addict living under the bridge. What's the difference? One says, I'm going to use my background and never let that happen to me or anybody else that I know, and they're using that as a reason. The other person says, because of my background, I'm living under a bridge addicted to drugs. That person has used it as an excuse. So it all becomes, going back to right from the very beginning, is you got to decide what's the law of acceptability. The law of acceptability, yeah, and, and strengthening that inner game, building that muscle so that you start developing a muscle that says, no matter what, I'm going to build upon a foundation that actually supports the life I want versus hoping. Now, I've always looked at it, especially for those people that know you and that are listening right now that have, have seen that, you, that you're going to be on with us, inner game is, is one of your more advanced programs. It's really the foundational piece, but yeah, it is. It's very advanced because everything else revolves around it. So it's really the seven pillars of mastering your inner game or seven pillars of, of, of creating that psychology to support you in whatever it is that you want to change or do differently in your life. So if you're off or make yourself off on April 1st, you know, give us a call. We'll put you in touch with Bob Donnell. At inner game, I've heard great, great things about it. Uh, and you know something? It's, it's just a matter of you making a decision. The decision is, are you happy where you are or do you want to make a change? And if you want to make a change, it's a real simple. The next question is really, really simple. 
well, what are you doing about it? <laughs> right? I mean, it's That's just right. that simple. And, you know, we're giving you an opportunity right here. And again, we'll post the information about Bob Donnell in her game right there on Ron Siegel Radio on Facebook. You've got the Twitter. And you know where to find me. All you have to do is set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to Bob Donnell for joining us today. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Steve, who's engineering us. And of course, we can't do it without you spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you want to meet any of our guests, sort of call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. A house in the middle of our streets. A house. You're listening to ESPN Radio 1700.